Workers at Fukushima Daiichi have another challenge on their hands. Heavy rains over northeastern Japan have caused more spills of water at the nuclear plant, and some of it may have reached the Pacific Ocean. More than 100 millimeters of rain fell on Sunday. The water built up inside barriers surrounding storage tanks, and workers discovered spills in at least 12 locations. The rains eased, then the water stopped flowing over the barriers. But workers are looking into the possibility that it may have made its way through ditches and into the ocean. The barriers are 30 centimeters high, but rain a few days ago had pushed water levels in some areas above 20 centimeters, and workers can only pump out a few centimeters per day. They say they checked the water for radioactivity to ensure it met safety standards. Then they released some of it into the compound. They went through the same process last Wednesday after a typhoon brought heavy rains. Now we're going to head over to Asia where we have a super typhoon called Typhoon Francisco. They call it a typhoon. Same thing for us. It's a hurricane. But right now it is sitting uh, right off the coast of Japan. And you can see it's expected to come in as about a Cat 1 as we get into Thursday afternoon. But right now a Cat 4 is what we're looking at. Now, although the Japanese government has vowed to come up with measures to tackle the radioactive water leak, the situation may be worse than thought. Uh, studies from last year indicate that radioactive water will contaminate the entire Pacific Ocean in just six years. Well, another typhoon may be headed toward Japan, and the self-defense forces want to be sure they're ready. Commanders sent more than 400 personnel to an island south of Tokyo after Typhoon Wipa hit last week. The rains caused heavy flooding on Izu Oshima. Parts of a mountain at its center slid over several neighborhoods. The landslides killed at least 27 people. SDF personnel are searching for 19 other residents who are still missing. Another 500 SDF personnel will arrive on the island over the next few days. Forecasters say Typhoon Francisco could hit Japan later this week. Residents of typhoon-ravaged Izuoshima Island, south of Tokyo, are evacuating their homes due to the threat of more landslides. Weather officials say that Typhoon Francisco is approaching and could bring more heavy rainfall. The town of Oshima issued evacuation advisories on Saturday afternoon to more than 1,200 households in two communities on the island. Town officials say about 1,000 residents are taking shelter in six evacuation centers. Heavy rain from, from Typhoon Wipa caused massive mudslides on Wednesday that crushed 30 houses. 27 people were killed and 21 are still missing. Weather authorities warn that heavy rain from, from Typhoon Francisco may hit the island from pre-dawn hours through Sunday morning. Town officials are stepping up patrols in affected areas and taking other precautionary measures. Rescue workers were forced to halt their search for the missing following the evacuation advisories. They plan to resume searching as soon as the advisories are lifted. Now, although the Japanese government has vowed to come up with measures to tackle the radioactive water leak, the situation may be worse than thought. Uh, studies from last year indicate that radioactive water will contaminate the entire Pacific Ocean in just six years. Kim Minji reports. This graphic shows the gradual contamination of the Pacific Ocean due to leaks of radioactive water from the crippled Fukushima nuclear plant in Japan. The simulation, which was run by a German marine research institute, shows the entire Pacific waters being polluted by radioactive water in just six years. Although the results failed to grab attention when first released last year, experts now fear that the hypothesis may become a scary reality after the Japanese government recently admitted that some 300 tons of radioactive water have leaked into the ocean. Misei Murata, a former Japanese ambassador to Switzerland, criticized the Japanese government and the operator of the crippled nuclear plant, Tokyo Electric Power Corporation, for its handling of the situation. TECO recently admitted to leaks of radioactive water. The amount is much more that the simulation had taken into account. 
The international community has also voiced concerns over the issue, but Tokyo, meanwhile, is busy drumming up support for its bid in hosting the 2020 Olympics. 2020 Tokyo, let's do well. Murata stressed the fact that Japan does not realize the gravity of the issue is more outrageous. If Japan can secure the safety of its own nation, it is being insincere in hosting an international event like the Olympics. It should step down. A Russian nuclear research center had also advised TEPCO to take measures two years ago, just after the accident broke out. But Japan turned down the suggestion. It's now been two years and five months since the nuclear crisis, and Tokyo has finally set out to deal with the problem. However, experts say that it may be too late. The former ambassador also warned that Japan may lose its rights in its exclusive economic zone if it fails to block the leakage into the 200 nautical mile zone. A fish auction has been held in northeastern Japan that could mark a return to normal. Uh, studies from last year indicate that radioactive water will contaminate the entire Pacific Ocean in just six years. For some people living in Fukushima Prefecture, the fish put up for bid were caught off a city less than 60 kilometers from the Daiichi nuclear plant. It is the first time fish from the area have been sold since the 2011 nuclear accident. More than 100 wholesalers gathered at 6 a.m. at the Central Wholesale Market in Iwaki. Up for bid were 400 kilograms of marine products. The seafood represented 30 percent of the entire haul from test fishing conducted off fr on Friday off the prefecture. No radioactive materials were found in any of the samples. I'm very happy we can deal with locally caught fish again. The marine products were then delivered to retailers around Fukushima Prefecture. The fish have been put on sale with a certificate showing radiation test results. I have not eaten locally caught fish for almost three years. I came out in the morning before the fish was sold out. Japan's Prime Minister says he will work to dispel rumors about contaminated seafood being caught in waters off the country's northeastern coast. Shinzo Abe made the pledge while visiting a fishing port in Fukushima Prefecture. Abe was in Soma City, where a fishery official explained the experimental fishing that resumed on September 25th. Fishing was suspended in waters of the damaged nuclear power plant after radioactive wastewater leaks were discovered. Abe sampled some of the fresh catch. I want people across Japan to know that seafood caught off Fukushima is good and safe. I will work to dispel the rumors. Abe later visited another town affected by the 2011 earthquake and tsunami. The townspeople have agreed to move to higher ground. He told residents living in temporary housing that his government will do its best to rebuild Fukushima. He called on them to help with the undertaking. Abe then visited a kitchen utility factory that resumed production in a former no-entry zone. The Prime Minister has visited areas affected by the March 2011 disaster almost every month since he took office. Uh, studies from last year indicate that radioactive water will contaminate the entire Pacific Ocean in just six years. Japanese government officials have been helping their local counterparts prepare for the event of another nuclear accident. They're trying to ensure the safety of people who would be central to such plants. They say bus drivers who would drive residents to safety should not be exposed to more radiation than the general public. Government officials are helping municipalities within 30 kilometers of a nuclear plant drop their evacuation plans. They set the yearly exposure limit for drivers at one millisievert. Government officials will ask transport companies to help them find ways to evacuate areas in the event of an accident. And personnel from Japan's self-defense forces are expected to make some other suggestions. 
Government officials are taking other steps, too. They say they'll show municipal workers how to take iodine tablets. They say that can help prevent people from absorbing radioactive substances. The plan is to distribute the tablets to households within five kilometers of a nuclear plant. When a worker saw danger at the Hanford Nuclear Reservation in Washington State, where 56 million gallons of radioactive waste needs to be cleaned up, he said something. Then he was fired. Now he and a second whistleblower explain to Carter Evans why they think they've been targeted for retaliation. You clearly don't know who you're talking to, so let me clue you in. I am not in danger, Skyler. I am the danger. A guy opens his door and gets shot, and you think that of me? No. I am the one who knocks. For more than a decade, Dr. Walt Tamasitis has raised questions about design flaws at this $13 billion nuclear waste treatment plant under construction at Hanford. It's what he was paid to do. Yes, My job was to point out if there was a problem, to identify the problem, and to a, and offer solutions to it. Earlier this month, Camositis was called into a special meeting with a manager. He says, today's your last day, give me your badge, your Blackberry, pack your things up and we'll escort you to the door. Were you surprised? Shocked. Did they give you a reason? They just gave the reason that we need to cut back. It was the end of his career with project subcontractor URS. But his concerns about the potential for a radioactive explosion at Hanford persist. If the explosion was severe enough, would be released to the public. It would be very similar to the explosions you saw at Fukushima. That's how bad this could be. That's how bad it could be. Tamasitis explained his concerns to Congress in 2011. They include the trapping of explosive hydrogen gas in the waste, which can lead to fires or an explosion. As a result, the federal government halted work on a key part of the facility. So they basically stopped construction because of the red flags you raised. Yes, sir. His testimony was truly crucial. Oregon Senator Ron Wyden verified Tamasitis' claims, and he says his firing sends a clear message. It signals to all of the others who might be concerned about safety issues that they can be muzzled. Their job's not going to be safe. That's unacceptable. It has an overwhelming chilling effect. Donna Bushy is manager of environmental and nuclear safety at Hanford. She and Tamasitis have sued for whistleblower protection. She told me she's now feeling the heat. The fact that he was terminated, uh, it, it sent a resounding message to me. And you feel you're next to Abs go? Absolutely, I do. Let me show you the document that URS wants me to sign. It says in a nutshell, give us total legal immunity and uh, you get your severance pay. You have to give up your whistleblower claim against him. Correct, exactly. Exactly. And I don't plan to sign it. His case goes back to federal court next month. URS would not discuss personnel matters, but in a statement said it encourages its employees to raise any concerns about safety. Do you think it was retaliation? Oh, retaliation. Clear retaliation. Just last month, Energy Secretary Ernest Moniz issued a memo saying we must not deter, discourage, or penalize employees for the timely identification of safety, health, environmental, quality, or security issues. <laughs> Less than two weeks later, this nuclear engineer with 44 years on the job found himself out of a job. Carter Evans, CBS News, Richland, Washington.